Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jeff. Today we're going to talk about um, modernizing or modernization of Hawaii developments and stuff along those lines. So, Hawaii historically has been what a lot of people would refer to about 10 years behind everyone else. They like it that way. They like to move at the island speed. Much to the chagrin of many people, including Washington, for example, um, the HawaiiBusiness.com did an article about the state of Hawaii's plan to modernize its me medieval tech systems. So, from the from the outside looking in, you'd be like, "Well, why, why do we need to upgrade? You know why? Well, in an era of cybersecurity, you know your banking information, your personal information, if the firmware." the systems are not up to upgraded you know there's vulnerabilities in those systems so it's really important that um, tech systems be updated as more um, more threats continue to become apparent you know it's a it's also a security issue just as much as it is anything else so the the whole idea of you know being behind in times in theory is you know it's, it's convenient because it means less training, but on the other side of the token, it also means, you know, um, vulnerabilities that make citizens at risk. Even if it's advanced warning tsunami systems, uh, rescue 911, um, banking, you know, it all, it all should be up to par. But here he said, um, one of the state legislators under Abercrombie back in, you know, there, about 2013, he said, we've identified 743 different legacy systems. His name was Bahagolia, Bahagolia, I, don't, I can't pronounce his name, it's B-H-A-G-O-W-A-L-I-A. This is a massive challenge, I have to call a spade a spade. What he's referring to is the archaic uh, IT system in Hawaii. Okay, but outside of tech, let's take it to the next level. So, development, infrastructure, here in Kona, I mean, much of the in infrastructure is fairly unstable. I think it has some flaws to it. And if and the reason the infrastructure not being up to snub or not being um, developed, built properly is an issue, whether it be a tsunami or a earthquake, if it's not earthquake proof, you know, these are issues that are concerns, but also in not taking the proper steps to plan it all the way through, it's also made Kona a very dangerous place as a pedestrian. They do run the Kona Ironman, and multiple times here on the Big Island, you know, there's been people hit by cars, riding mopeds, riding bikes, running, you know, and it, 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 a lot of it can be improved by just a little bit more forethought and foresight into it. And sometimes it feels like, you know, from what I've heard, and I've talked to people about this, I've talked to both sides of it. I've talked to people who are like, we need to improve here in Hawaii how um, you know things are going because everyone's going to benefit across the board if we improve these things. And then I've talked to people who say, "Well, I hope Hawaii erupts and it just comes in and takes the whole thing out." <laughs> Obviously, when you're talking to someone on that side of the polarity, you know, on that side, on that pole, you know, they're they're kind of scary, and you wonder what's going on inside their head. And then you know that he did retract and he said, "Well, I hope that you know everyone gets out of the way." <laughs> But he hopes that catastrophe happens and the whole thing gets, you know, erased by lava. That's an opinion. Everyone's entitled to their opinion, so that's, that's understandable. But, you know, if if we all just stood around and waited for a catastrophe to happen, how would we progress? I mean, you could say that, well, we're better off just as hunter and gatherers living in a village and taking care of each other. As nomads or whatever. You know, I don't know. I don't know what gave us the instinct to always continually want to grow. I don't know if that, if what's what's the the difference between um, keeping things the same and constantly advancing. I mean, is, isn't there a balance there too? I mean, how are we moving too fast for our own good? Or you know, so those are both. I think obviously, if you meet in the middle, you, you take the the one guy who says slow down, and you take the guy who says hurry up, and you meet in the middle, then you have a little bit of a balance. <laughs> but um, even outside of that, you know, when it comes to developments, someone today asked me about water parks, and 
we said, you know, would a water park be a good idea? And I, I had had this conversation with a friend of mine who uh, always goes back to the Philippines, and he says one of the things that he loves about Davao City, Davao, is that um, they have a wakeboard park right next to his house. And I said, you know, that would be kind of cool. I said, you know, like that Kelly Slater wave pool that they have, a lot of people surf. I mean, how come they don't consider something like that here? And he was like, well, you know, they got water. And I was like, you got all this land out there that's just sitting there. Um, you know, it, it's not exactly an eyesore, but it's, it doesn't, it's not like, you know, it's land, it's flat land. And I thought about the opportunity that that would have, not just for the youth, for the people, for the community, as a large whole, you know. I mean, let's be real, we already got roads here, we already have development. It's not like uh, you're doing anything too outside of the spectrum of what's already been going on. You're just saying, well, what kind of things can we do to improve our community, right? I mean, I'm sure they would have come up against opposition when they built the dang pool, <laughs> you know, the pool here in Kona. Uh, the gym. It's like, I'm sure there was people out there being like, why, why are we going to build the pool? Why do we need a pool? We got the ocean right here, right? <laughs> I mean, people do that. They, they just come out of the woodworks on all types of things. Pretty much every single development that takes place in Hawaii has some sort of opposition that's a movement that's coming against it. Even the, tr the rail. Now, I've already spent a considerable amount of time pondering this, going over, like, why the rail? Why would anyone oppose the rail? I have a really hard time trying to understand why someone would oppose the rail. A public transit system that takes, gets cars off the road is a lot safer and it doesn't take up as much land as four lane or six lane freeways. The rail, even if it's, let's just say it's two lanes, two rails going each way, I mean that's still going to take up not a lot of room. <laughs> And it's going to be elevated, right? I mean, most of these rails are on stanchions. So it's a pillar, and then it's a stanchion that spreads out, and it has rails on each side. Safer, they're less on carbon emissions, but yet there's people who come against it, and they want to derail it, and they want to try and stop the program. And it just, I mean, it's like you go to Japan; they figured it out. They're, they're an island. They've had, they've got a lot more people, and they, they, we can learn a lot from an island like Japan, even though we're a smaller island. But we can still learn from the islands of Japan. I think there's four of them: Honshu, Kyoto. You know, there's a, there's a bunch of them. I don't know all the names. But just following that example right there, and saying, yeah, rail is the answer. Why would anyone oppose it if the data, the research and development, has already proven that rail is the answer? It's just like here on the Big Island, I say build rail, but, you know, people will be like, no, and then they build a, this massive highway, this massive widening, they widen the highway massively, I mean, the amount of dirt and land that they rip up, and just to build this highway is a lot, <laughs> I think to myself, man, they could have built a much more effective rail system, now, obviously, not everyone's going to get the other way, and, you know, the deal's already done, they're building the road, okay, cool. But 20 years from now, why are we supposed to be not thinking about 20 years from now? I mean, when, let's just take it back to the 1600s or the 1500s, and I don't know exactly how someone was thinking back then, but, I mean, it's just like the guy who says, well, if we plant this tree in 50 years, it'll yield coconuts for our, gener our future generations. So, in terms of development, if you're thinking ahead like that for the future generations, why is that considered such a bad thing. Safety, developmental, I mean, infrastructure. I mean, you could build a shack or you could build a strong structure. You could build one that fails in 20 years and looks gaudy and horrible and gets weather stained and not properly taken care of. Or you could build a nice looking structure that stands strong for many years. So why hold up development? I'm not saying go out and just develop the whole thing, but if there's a good idea and it improves the community, I would say it would be good to proceed with it. Yeah, it sounds like, obviously I've put a lot of thought into this. Um, there's, there's multiple times I've been walking even through like 
some, like Old Airport for example, I'll walk through there and I'll be like, man, they can really beautify this place. It has so much potential. How come they don't? Like just, you know, I've been to some resorts in Maui and stuff that are just, you just walk in there and you smell the flowers and the plumeria and the water features and the koi pond and the, what is it, the feng shui or the energy or the, whatever the zen about the place, the garden. It just feels so much more restoring and healthy than if I'm walking through a place that's got, you know, that just doesn't look well groomed. It's like a, it's like, do you want to date someone who's not well groomed? Or do you want your significant other to be well groomed? So why not manicure your, your um, land in a way that looks nice? Why stop that?